Hello, I'm Davia Chambers and welcome to Let's Talk Tobago. In today's episode, we'll be visiting one of my favorite animals, horses, as we take you to the picturesque seaside village of Buku to visit the Healing with Horses Foundation. We've also got the latest news and reviews on what's happening in Tobago. So here are the headlines. The island's entrepreneurs are getting greater support with the launch of the Tobago Export Development Program. A scientific approach is being used to determine the true value of the tourism industry in Tobago and later carnival preparations in the east. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. <music> Welcome to the Scarborough Library Facility. Here we utilize the latest technology to bring you library and information services. Once inside, the staff at the information desk will direct you to the relevant department. And now, our CSR Darian will help you through the registration process. Thank you, Dave. Ready to Thank register? Thank you. Good afternoon, yes. Can you see your documents? One completed form, photo identification, and utility bill? Yes. Thanks so much. This is your library card. It displays your user ID as well as your barcode. This information is also reflected on the reverse side. If you'd like, you can tear along the perforated line to detach the two pieces. This can be kept in your keychain, the other can be kept in your wallet or your purse. But the Scarborough Library facility is so much more than just physical books. Once registered, you can log on to our website at library.diazth.gov. Dot tt. Scroll down to select the NALIS link. Once you are connected to the NALIS website, you can then download the Overdrive app to your Apple or Android devices. Using your personal account, you can borrow ebooks and access online databases. Renewal of physical books can also be done online. The new Scarborough Library facility will revolutionize your library experience where information inspires innovation. Healing with Horses is a non-profit organization founded by Veronica Danzel La Fortune in 2010. It began with one horse rescued from the rainforest and Veronica's love for children. She and her husband Lennon are passionate about providing differently abled children ages 6 to 12 with encouragement and a safe space to play and interact. And speaking of encouragement, entrepreneurs from Tobago are exploring the true potential of their businesses for growth and trade. They're learning just how to do that through a new export program. Here's more in this report. 13 Tobagonian entrepreneurs producing a range of goods such as handbags, personal care items, food and beverages are getting export ready. They're learning the skills they need to compete globally. They're participating in the Tobago Export Development Program, which was launched recently on the island. It's the result of collaboration between the Export Facilitation Organization of Trinidad and Tobago Export TT, the Tobago House of Assembly, and the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Export TT has shifted significant attention and focus to the work of these pockets of growth on the island. Dedicating resources, energy, and manpower to this effect that has culminated in the development of a program that holds real promise through practicality and real-time implementation. Tobago's businesses will get a chance to build their capacity to expand and export their goods. This will increase their contributions to a country's economy. All of you who are here today, you have the potential to be the next conglomerate, the next big company that will be exporting major products and services from Tobago. Export TT is offering these entrepreneurs training in various areas that will help them increase the visibility, competence and capacity of their businesses. So business persons here in Tobago will um, benefit from business coaching and mentorship facilitative workshops, group review sessions, and access to business tools and resources. 
program beneficiaries will also be provided with access to uh, export TTs, marketing opportunities, business-to-business -business initiatives and services, as well as training under the Export TTs Competitiveness Project, which supports plans guiding continued export development. The program will run for 12 months. It's part of a larger national strategy for expanding the country's trading environment. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. The Healing with Horses headquarters is also known as the Love and Magic Information Center. It's frequented by both visitors and volunteers. You can come to just relax or show your support by purchasing souvenirs. The proceeds assist the foundation in providing free occupational therapy sessions for young clients. Now one community is being honored with the recent unveiling of a new landmark and as Crystal George tells us, it's a reminder of its many achievements and inspiration for the future. Here's more. If you're taking a drive through the community of Bethel Montgomery, you'll probably see a monument erected on the upper level of the recreation ground. It's a reminder of the achievements of the community and the inspiration of its people. It's also meant to instill a sense of community pride. This monument of honor that will be unveiled today is a physical memorial of the outstanding achievements of the residents from the Bethel Montgomery community. The monument pays homage to those who have excelled in all walks of life, including the areas of sports, academia, culture, health, health and medicine, business, political service, and important first. The community has faced its own fear of challenges where security and youth developments are concerned. But it also has a lot to be proud of, especially its most famous daughter, Linda McCarter Lewis Sandy, Calypso Rose. The monument is a symbol of villagers' efforts to move forward. Bethel is a gem of Tobago. The project was about creating not only a history or historical landmark for Bethel, recognizing the contributions that the persons have made, the achievements of the people of Bethel. And their... this monument of honor is more than stone. It's more than the plaques and the memorabilia that you will receive. It's more than this event that we will experience here today. But this monument is an inspiration to the community. Area representative Shimari Hector says, community engagements, team spirit, the sharing of resources, and the mobilization of strengths and assets have all contributed to the development of this community. He says he's very proud of his area's achievement. As area representative, it gives me a tremendous joy, a great deal of pleasure to be able to stand at the unveiling ceremony of a monument of honor in my community, in Bethel. You see, for me, as a proud product of Bethel, I share a certain kind of joy, a certain kind of passion for the development of Bethel and for the development of my people. This is the first monument of this kind on the island. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Now, since 2010, Healing with Horses has grown significantly. There are now 11 rescue horses, summer camps, weekly activities, and after-school programs right here. There's also a playground where visitors can ride horses, enjoy yoga, and even visit the sensory park. From the Sensory Park to Shaw Park, where a new interdepartment personality and a new Calypso monarch have been crowned. Here are the highlights. Akila Lawrence, the representative of the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, is the interdepartment personality 2018. She edged out eight other competitors for the title and winning the prize of $8,000. She also had the best carnival win. Finishing second was Shawnee Thompson of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Shadia Henry secured third spot for the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service. Shadia also won Best Talent. <laughs> the 
Meanwhile, Karen McMillan of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service took home $7,000 and the title of Interdepartment Calypso Monarch 2018. I invest in all my money in Upper Cider. Why the men them hate it? Boy, I really don't know. But the women love it. Listen up how the story goes. Every girl walk thick inside they say that this thing is great. They want dick insider. They say that girl can wait. Second was Amanda Craig of the Trinidad and Tobago Airport Authority. And third, fire services Yariel Phillips. She gets more than she expects. Because that is me job spec. I drop some water inside Jean Tank. It ran down all by she told. She was she had. She was she knows this fire But the show didn't end there. Patrons had an opportunity to join the after party. I'm Marlon Gottsleben for Let's Talk to Bego. We have to take a quick break, but coming up. We look at what tourism officials are doing to strengthen the local industry when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Visitors appreciate the unique experiences offered by Healing with Horses. On TripAdvisor, it's been described as amazing, memorable, and a great experience. Now, lots of visitors may or may not mean big spending. So how do we know the true impact of tourism on our economy? The answer to that question is in this next report. Every year, many visitors come to Tobago to get away from it all or experience events like the Tobago Heritage Festival, the Blue Food Festival, and the Goat and Crab Race Festival. Traditionally, the state of the tourism sector is determined by the number of visitors over a given period, but knowing how much they spend and how they spend their money can help the island's policy makers and businesses better understand the economic contributions of the industry and aid in future planning. When you have strong visitor expenditure on your destination, it means that you are growing in real terms and that is the ideal situation. There is also another metric in terms of measuring the spend and the direction of the spend. If most of the spend is taking place in concentrated areas, so say for instance, if the visitors are coming but not leaving the properties and only spending on accommodation, it means that you are missing an opportunity. But if they are coming and they are moving around, visiting sites and attractions, spending on local craft, you know, going to shows and, and dining out, it means the expenditure is greatly increased. And that is exactly what you want to achieve from your marketing. Whether they come and go via sea and air, there must be a consistent means of finding out how much they spend. What we'll be doing is um, issuing surveys or what has been done. They are issuing questionnaires to the visitors. And it's a very scientific method that is used throughout the Caribbean and throughout the world in terms of getting proper estimates on visitor expenditure. And we'll be employing those same um, practices to ensure that we get a proper handle on the visitor spend. The data collected will help the tourism agency come up with targeted marketing strategies. The agency will also collaborate with the tourism sector to increase the number of visitors and the on-island expenditure. We have to work with the persons and the agencies that are putting together those, those um, events to ensure that there is sufficient on-island expenditure opportunities for the visitors to participate in. So it's not just about coming and look. It's not just about just being here. It's about what else can you do and how we marry one event with tradition, with culture, with heritage, so that these are the features that cause more activity on island to take place and as a result more spend. The Tobago Tourism Agency was established by the Tobago House of Assembly last year. The agency's main goal is to enhance the revenue of the tourism industry. This will in turn improve the economic standing of the island. I'm Amarara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. 
The horses at the foundation get excellent care. In fact, they all get a dental checkup from three members of the German International Association for the functional improvement of equine teeth ever so often. This ensures that there are no sharp edges in their teeth that can cause injury to the horses. Now recently, the Student Support Services Unit brought a mass caravan with a difference to primary schools in Tobago. But the featured performers had a different message in mind for the students. Carnival is a festival that celebrates the uniqueness of our nation's culture. It's also an occasion where some people choose to engage in risky or inappropriate behavior. So the Student Support Services Unit of the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy has engaged the island's youth to create awareness of what constitutes inappropriate behavior as well as the consequences. They did so through the 10th annual Mass Carnival Caravan. The caravan stopped at all of the island's primary schools, including Bonacourt government. Today we came to do a mass caravan, mass, M-A-S meaning morality and sexuality caravan. Um, it's in keeping with the carnival season, basically helping the students to be more aware of good touch, bad touch, um, appropriate and inappropriate peer inter interactions as well as um, giving them options in terms of how to communicate and how to interact with their peers in a more positive way. Bullying was another major issue dealt with by the caravan. In this skit, students were encouraged to be a buddy and not a bully. The caravan was aimed at highlighting common issues that are most prominent during the carnival season and how they should be handled. I operate as, let's say, the teacher. So I'm one of the main characters. I would more or less be given a lot more of the information. Um, as the production goes on, I try to control the, the, the audience, try to control the flow of it, and I would give cues every now and again. And most of the information that you would need, the fillers for um, whatever topic that we choose, this has been my role in this particular um, production. One guidance counselor says the presentation used to deliver the message to students is one they'll always remember. Um, I think the way that we presented it in terms of our dramatic presentation, I think that it would really stick with them and they will be able to implement it. For example, um, the point about not everything that you hear that you have to sing and repeat. I think that's a message that would stick with them during the carnival season. So it will bring about a consciousness of what songs that they should actually sing and listen. This educational caravan was the Student Support Services Unit's first educational campaign for 2018. Remember, this carnival season, respect yourself and your body. Remember. I'm Kirin DeFreitas for Let's Talk Tobago. The Healing with Horses Foundation has many projects, including sessions for the differently abled, integrated summer camps, and most importantly, community development activities like the free equine nature therapy. Now, Tobago joined the rest of the world in celebrating World Wetlands Day, and it was about more than simply highlighting the need to preserve our swamps and mangroves. Omodara Mills has more on how the occasion was observed. Speyside Anglican Primary School and the Wim Anglican Primary School are two of the cleanest schools on the island. They were awarded gold certificates for the Keep a Clean School Award program, an initiative of the NGO Environment Tobago. The award ceremony coincided with World Wetlands Day celebrations. Students learned about the importance of wetlands like those at Kilguin, Buku and Pititru under the theme Wetlands for a Sustainable Urban Future. Recently, we've been having, having a lot of rains and so forth. And a little rainfall and Scarborough flood out. You think that this has anything to do with it? Yes. yes. Because wetlands control the flow of water and it acts as a sort of sink for water. So had the developers known about wetlands and the function they serve, they might have built a little differently. The Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries collaborated with the NGO to sensitize schools about the functions of wetlands. These are areas covered in water that can be static, flowing, fresh, brackish or salt. The water can be permanent or temporary and it does not exceed 6 meters at low tide. We hope to impart information to all of you about the importance of protecting our wetlands 
as they help to protect against storms, tides, hurricanes, storm surges, floods, coastal erosions. Our wetlands also provide habitat and feeding sources for many of the marine life. In keeping with the World Wetlands Day celebrations, Environment Tobago launched its Tobago Rich to Reef Education Program. The initiative will target students from Forms 4 to 6 during the second and the third terms of the academic year. The learning experience will include visits to the main rich forest to reserve, wetlands and marine areas. A program like this helps to empower you as students, empower you as the next generation to know these areas are important so you can be activists, you can step up and say we are going to conserve, we are going to preserve the areas of Tobago because we're not looking at it from preservation by law, but preservation that says it is right to do this. It is right to keep our place clean, it is right to keep our place green and serene and safe and all these things. Wetlands Day programs were held in Scarborough as well as Roxborough. The environmental projects are designed to encourage the youth to be proactive about keeping their surroundings clean and to embrace the need to conserve our natural environment. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time for a break, but when we return, carnival preparations in the East. Stay with us, Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. If you are looking for an extraordinary wedding idea, listen up. Healing with Horses offers you a wedding package to suit your budget. It includes an ordained pastor conducting the ceremony and a horseback ride through the village of Buku. To festivities of a different kind now, as Windward Tobago is also gearing up for Carnival 2018. This year, officials say the festival will be a little different. Here's more. This year's Tobago Carnival is set to be a good one especially on the Winwood side. The Winwood Carnival Committee is calling the 2018 festival Carnival with a Twist. This year we focused mainly on heightened experience for the patron as well as the participant. And uh, we placed emphasis on the educational aspects of our shows as well. This year, Roxborough will celebrate 51 years of organized carnival celebrations and the most anticipated Queen Show and Calypso competition will take place at the Sidgree Sporting Complex. Saturday, of course, is the highly anticipated uh, Windward uh, Afro Queen Show and the Calypso Monarch. We have eight lovely participants this year. They will be portraying um, the African influence on Carnival. Um, this time around, we decided to change it up a bit. So we've added a new element where instead of coming out in Carnival, where they'll come out in their casual way, but their casual way has to be a, a modern take on a traditional Carnival character. Dam Lorraine, Jab Jab or Jab Molassi or Perugnard, any one of them, and they have to embody that character from the start, from the time they enter the stage, they come on the stage to the finish of the show. On Monday, the parade of both senior and junior bands will be on display. But what's Carnival without Juve? In the past, issues such as the late start have been a concern. In 2018, that's been addressed. Of course, Monday morning is Juve, and so we have decided to add another, another element to the juve. We're having a wake-up call. So we found that people tend to come out later and sometimes if you're not participating in a band, you know, you, you're not, you don't feel included. So we wanted to include everyone. So the wake-up call is essentially, um, we start at 4 o'clock. We start at Prince Street, Upper Roxborough. And so there's the rhythm section, there's the tambo bamboo, the iron, the bottle, the spoon, the Pan, steel pan, um, fire breeders, we have flambo, a sort of procession to start the carnival. With all the new elements implemented in the Winwood Carnival, the season is expected to attract a larger crowd than in previous years. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. 
carnival time is upon us, which means church camps are open. Church assemblies and other groups can also visit the magical Healing with Horses playground, paying only a small donation to the foundation. In our final story, seven junior steel orchestras lined up to face off against the defending champs Signal Hill Secondary School for the title of Junior Pan Champ 2018. We've got the results in this story. Have a look. Signal Hill Secondary School has been dethroned as Junior Pan Champs. Eight steel orchestras contended for the crown at the Junior Panorama Championship 2018. And the Tobago Festival's commission is impressed with the quality of play. The commission has pledged its continued support for the event. The history surrounding the birth of this national emblem is one that every citizen should be proud of. We at the Tobago Festivals Commission, we remain committed to the visibility and the growth of PAN and the culture in Tobago in general. And so we will continue to partner with the schools, with PAN Tobago, and any other entity that wants to move the culture and PAN forward in Tobago. <laughs> Bethesda Steel Sensation and Speyside High School were crowned joint champions. They tied for first place with 261 points. Steel Sensation's winning selection was Pan in Danger by Merchant. The tune of choice for Speyside High School was Full of Vibes by Aaron, Voice, St. Louis and Marge Blackman. One point behind in third place was Roxborough Poly Cup playing Leave We Alone by Calypso Rose and Marshall Montano. The Junior Panorama Championship 2018 was hosted at Signal Hill Secondary School. I'm Marlon Gutzleben for Let's Talk to Bego. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. So let's take a look at who had their say this week. Alright, so we here with Mr. Jordan right now. So we here with Bruce right now. So we here with Brent right now. Are we asking Mr. Philip? Are we asking Mr. Winchester? I can't talk for it. That's it. That's it. Inside the inter department show, annual inter department show, and we do need have your say segment, a special have your say segment. And we hear one of the contestants right now, Miss Ayana Jordan. And we're asking her, Who are you supporting for 2018 Road March? I want George, of course, always. Always, yes. So, you really think that Mr. George is going to take it home this year? I'm positive, very positive. Marsha Montana and Super Blue all the way. Serious? All the way. You really think that's taking it? Yes, of course. Why Why you think that song taking it? Because Marshall is a boss. Pretty. We are back in for Road March 2018. I'll put you on the spot. I, I feel I feel the kingdom can take it away. Why? Kingdom, why really? Why? Yeah, put on his spot and top the top. Let me tell you, kingdom right now had the most momentum. The thing about the Savannah is the key are not counted it out. Marshall and Super Blue. Marshall and Super Blue? That is correct. You're one of them too? Yes, I am. Who are back in for the road match? Who back in? Who back in for the road match? Patrice. Patrice? Yeah. Patrice. 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 No, I this is a hard question. I like Iowa, but I like Marshall Kingdom. Like, it's real hype. Like, Iowa, George is an icon. Marshall is an icon. Super Blue himself is an icon also. I am not involving myself into their decision, but I wish all of them the best. You don't know. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Tobago House of Assembly's Carnival Kings and Queens 2018. We now start, get ready day, set up on start, meet we on the way. We lining up, ready to charge ahead, for what is not enough, I want you to jump up, trouble it come.